Hi and welcome, this is Dave Litton and in this very short video I want to show you how to use the basics of Microsoft Project 2010 for a small simple project. So let's make a start, I want to open up the Microsoft Project application itself. The first thing you'd want to do is set up your basic project information and for this reason we go to the project tab and project information here. Now today's date I'm recording this is the 10th of January what I want to do is to set the start date to the 16th of January just to show you that you can adjust this for some point in the future. So that, that's good enough for the moment, so let's press OK. Alright, we now need to set up our default settings and for this we go to the File menu and choose Options. Now you won't want to change that might be of some use. The General tab, we can leave that as it is. The Display tab will show you how you can change currency if you wish to. You can do that here. The Schedule tab is fairly important. It shows you aspects of setting up the calendar, which I'll do in a moment. And pretty much everything else you can leave as is. I like to check this updating task status, updates resource status. That way, when you put a task at 20% complete, it'll adjust the work ratio to the same amount. There is an Advanced tab here. Again, I, th I suggest you leave most of this as it is. You could set a default rate for your resources in terms of how much you're, they're costing you per hour but other than that again I think you can pretty much leave this as it is let's press the OK button then next step is to actually set up your project calendar and to this we stay on the project menu and go to change working time again for small simple projects I don't see any reason why you'd need to change this project by default starts at 8 o'clock in the morning goes through to 12 o'clock, four hours work, takes an hour off for lunch, and then does four hours in the afternoon, bringing you to 1700 or five o'clock. Doesn't work Saturdays and Sundays, that's the default setting here. If you wish to change anything of these for the standard project, then exceptions, you can put in particular dates that you wish to make an exception, for example, when your company might be closing down, or go to work weeks, and here you can, for example, change the hours that you might work per day. If you do change the hours, go back to the options again, and there's a convenient button here where you can actually change this. You need to make this harmonise with whatever you've got, because it changes the way in which project calculates. For now, I'm going to suggest everything stays exactly the same. OK, the next thing is then, therefore, to set up the tasks themselves. Now, if we go into task name here and type start, that'll be my first milestone. How do I enter it? Either by clicking another cell like this, or I could have used the return key on my keyboard or the uh, arrows keys on the keyboard as well. Either of those would do that. Notice we've got something called a task mode here, which is that we're using manually scheduled tasks, which I don't think is a good idea. What it means is it's asking you to go and schedule where tasks should start. I believe you set auto schedule. If you remember going back to file options, if you go to schedule, it's a good idea to set this to auto schedule so that that will in fact occur from here on in. Here you've got the default view which is your Gantt chart and what it consists of is a time frame here and a table to the left of it. You can pull that over and you can see it's got these columns in it. If you go to view, you can see different tables here. It's the entry table which I suggest you leave for the moment but you can later on set for cost and work and I'll show you how to do that later. For now, it's duration, and we'll enter the rest of the tasks. Let's have a plan task, a design task, build task, test, install, handover, and finish. Good. Well, as you can see, they've all lined up exactly on the start date of the project, like soldiers, waiting for you to tell them something different. The question marks here show that by default, project is assuming they are estimated tasks. So I want this to be a milestone task. Uh, so let's put that to zero. I'm just going to type in zero. However, you could use the spin controls. We'll have that as two days. So I'll just use a spin control to show you how that works. Then we'll have five, five, three, three and one and we'll set this to a milestone again now we and we'll set this to a milestone again now we could just link these all together by selecting them all like so go into the task menu and just choosing this link tool here and they'll 
dutifully do as you say. Let's unlink them. I'll show you something else. What you could do, however, is you could actually overlay the mouse on the bar itself so you get a four-pointed cross, click and hold, and drag downwards, and that would link them together like so. I'll just undo that. Be careful not to move the task in this direction because it will set up a constraint. You can find out information on any task by double-clicking its name. And you'll see here, if I go to Advanced, by moving it out in time, I've set a Start No Earlier Than constraint, which means there's a brick wall here in time, and this task will not go before it, which is a bad thing to do, unless, of course, it's a real constraint. So what I'm going to do here is to double-click and put that back to ball, which is the default setting. So when you link, be careful to go down or up, never left or right, as you might inadvertently drag this. But notice that if you do drag it, you get a little warning sign coming up here. But the next thing I want to show you, as for normal type of uh, projects, you'd want to have summary bars to show exactly the different stages or phases. And the way in which you do that is to select the tasks that you want underneath such a summary task, and click the summary button here. You'll see it's inserted a new summary task. We'll call this the definition phase. I'll click underneath this and do the design, build and test and we'll call that the execution phase. Not of the project manager, I might add. Do the final one here and we'll call this the acceptance phase. And there we've done it. Let's now link these together. I'll use the standard use the standard method of going from here to here, from here to here, from here to here, from here to here, like so. Just what I'm showing you this because I want you to get used to using this technique. You see the link arrows? If you overlay very carefully the mouse on them and double click, you can actually adjust the way in which they're connected and you'll better change them from different relationships. Let's take between build and test. I'll just double click here and we'll put a lead in which means we put a negative number in. You'll see exactly what that means because it overlaps by the amount I've put in. Let's show you now how you can delete a link. I'll double click again, I'll press delete and that now unlinks that. Let's again have a linkage between here and there and this time I'll put minus two days. So I've got these nicely like that. I'll link these to that. I'll link these together like so. And there we have it. Let's say for the build task that you need to wait until some materials are delivered. And it's an external dependency. And it's the 23rd of January. Let's put it in, say, the 26th or something like that. So let's put a start no earlier than just merely to show that, in fact, you won't have the materials to start building until, let's say, the 26th. Press OK. You can now see a one-day delay here. You'll see that you'll get a little symbol here, and it says this task has a start no earlier than constraint. Let's now set up the resource pool, and for this, we need to go to a view called the resource sheet. Let's now just enter in, much like the same way as we did tasks, the resources. We'll have a Dave. We'll have a Tom. We'll have a Dick. And we'll have a Harry. And just to show you, you can put non-human resources in. Imagine we need some cables. And we'll set this to materials. The only difference being here, of course, is materials don't have calendars when they're available. Uh, not normally anyway. And we'll have a cost per use here, showing that a reel of this particular cable, very expensive, is £350. We'll let Microsoft Project know that this is a drum of cable by typing drum in here as the material name. In terms of Dave, Tom, Dick and Harry, we can set in their costs. We'll put Dave as £50 an hour and the rest as 100 OK, that's our resources done. Let's now go back and look at the Gantt chart view. Let's now assign the resources to the tasks. Let's click the Resource tab and click on the Assign Resources command there. And this will give you an Assign Resources box coming up. Click on, in this case, this task plan. Click on Dave and click assign and you'll notice that Dave's name appears to the right of that comes to the right of that comes to design let's put Dick and Harry on that so I simply select those and press assign go to build we'll have Dick and Harry and cable what I'm going to do now is hold down the control button on my keyboard 
so I can select non-contiguous resources and assign them. In terms of the cable, we'll have three drums like so. Now go on to test, Tom and Harry on that, press assign. Then on install, we'll have Dave, click on Dave, press assign, hand over. We'll have everyone on that, apart from cable, of course. So that's how easy it is to assign resources. Now this is the entry table. Let's peel this away over here. If we now go to view and choose tables and we'll use the cost table simply because it has a fixed cost field. And for the build, in addition to the drum of cable, we'll need some other materials. But rather than, in, rather than include those in the resource sheet, we we'll merely add it as an expense. Let's have 400 pounds for that as a fixed cost. Now, like any task, I'm just going to double click on this and go to notes and make the note that the uh, £400 is for hotel and travel expenses. Just to show you, you can do it and it helps remind you what that £400 was for in the plan. The next thing we need to look at, of course, is whether we've got any problems with resources. And clearly there's one here, test, which has got a little red figure showing that this particular task has some resources that have got problems. Right click, you can fix it in the task inspector view, which I won't cover now. Or you could actually get Microsoft Project to reschedule the task to a later date when the resource would be able to fix it. However, I'd like to show you the traditional way since I think it will be more helpful. I'm going to select on the resource tab and here you can see you've got the command level resource. We could do this one resource at a time using resource views but I'm just going to press level all to fix it in one fell swoop. What project will do is it will try and fix the problems by delaying or splitting tasks. But let's just go and see what happens. Click select and sure enough it's increased the duration of some tasks so that it fixes the over allocation and we now have no problems in terms of resources. Let's just have a look at the big picture by clicking on project, project information and the statistics field. Now of course we can see something of more value. We could show this to the project board or the sponsor or senior management, check they're okay with these dates, here's the work, here's the cost. Uh, if they're happy with that then we can get this approved and we can actually start working against this plan. If we click on this, it gives us a few options here. I suggest for now you need to set the entire project and click OK. I now suggest going back to the task tab, going and selecting the tracking Gantt. This is similar to the normal Gantt except it has two bars for each task. The lower bar is a grey baseline which means this is what we originally agreed. There are also other tables you can use. For example, you can use the tracking table. And what this does is it shows you information on actual duration, remaining duration, actual cost, actual work, and so on and so forth. We could quite reasonably use the work table here. And we can use this as an entry screen for actually monitoring and tracking progress. First of all, let's go back to the task tab. Let's imagine that the plan task started and finished exactly on plan. We can use these buttons up here to show that this is now 100% that this is now 100 complete. Go into the design task and if, if we double click on the task name we could go to the general tab. It actually started on the 19th of January. Press OK. Microsoft Project reminds us that you want to move it and remove the link. No. Do you want to move it and keep the link? Yes, I do. Press OK. Now, if we just pull this back to see what's gone on here, you can see it shows that we've started a day late, and that impact has caused a day late here, but it hasn't caused any impact to the remaining tasks being shown here. We could actually show that we've actually put in, let's say, 15 hours work. This will automatically show you your 19% complete. You see, Microsoft Project will do the calculation for you. Let's suppose that we've found we've got some problems coming up ahead and the project manager has quite rightly shown that it's now going to take longer as we originally planned. Not to see there is a slight delay to the next task and this will have an impact on moving the end date out by one day. Let's make it even worse to show you what could happen here. Let's put this as 100 hours, 99 perhaps, 
Now we can see how the baseline has been severely impacted by problems in the middle of the project. What we can now do is look at the remainder of these tasks and these tasks yet to start and work out how we could possibly bring this back by applying more resources and so on and so forth. Then an important view, here I'm in the task tab, is to click details. It will split the screen into two and in the bottom screen, whichever task you select up here, it will show you who's assigned to it. If we click on the design task, we can see that Dick and Harry are both on this. Suppose that the actual work hours is different between both of them. Well, if we come down here and right click and click on work, you'll now better see that we can change actual work and remaining work, see that we can change actual work and remaining work per person, per task. Okay, and just finally, make sure we're on the project tab up here, click on the reports command and you'll see a variety of different reports here. In fact, these are reporting groups. If, for example, I double click on costs, you'll get various reports here that you could look at, print out and use to communicate with the rest of your team. So that's it. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it and good luck on your path to mastering Microsoft Project 2000.